I love this. This movie, movie does a really this. good job. Like, I don't know the ins and outs of baseball at all, but it does a really yep. good job of showing you everybody's motivation, even like the the interviewer, like the commentators. It shows you everybody's perspective, and it does a right. really good job of it not it being like clear still. Like, I, I didn't have a hard time following it, you know, and I don't know the sport at all. So kudos yeah. to them. Let's briefly. Stretch them out. Stretch those shoulders. Get loose. I'm loose. In three, loose. two, one. Welcome back to the big room and happy holidays. Happy Yay. holidays. What? I don't know what holiday People holiday? ask me all the time, Cameron, what's your favorite holiday? Is it Thanksgiving with all the food? Is it Christmas with the baby Jesus? It is not. <laughs> it is today, which is International Gin and Tonic Day. Oh, and you let me get whiskey. You don't like gin and tonic, do you? I do. Oh, well, I'm celebrating mm. with uh, the James Gin. Okay. Shout out to nice. James May, Shout Asian James parson May. of gin, and I also celebrated by buying and importing his newest flavor, with which released Are today. You really? Yes. We spent a lot of money today. Yes. You saved R. some. R. But I saved some money today. What else did we buy besides pizza? Um, That's not for the show. It doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> I, have a, I have a quick rant because we might have to have a, a quick episode because we're recording on a <laughs> Thursday, which is Nick's fault, which means that it's Bachelor at night. It's bachelor, Golden Bachelor, Golden Bachelor, and Bachelor, and bachelor in, Paradise. in Paradise. Three hours. Almost Bro. Paradise. Never mind. I'm not going to give you crap because I watch American Idol for three hours. I don't Hell watch yeah, it. Hell yeah, I don't give me crap. I'll be in here watching football. That's That's fair. Uh, so we got to get out of the way before all the women Listen, come over. We have to watch Gary's <laughs> journey. Um, one thing I want to rant about, you were watching Dancing with the Stars last oh, night. Um, and here's what I don't understand. This makes me really angry because it was d- every every year they do a Disney week. Yes. And this was they were just like, oh, it's, it's the 100th anniversary. It's Disney 100 year, whatever. Stupid. Who cares? <laughs> um, it's an ABC show. It is not even on television. It is only on Disney Plus now. No, it's on television again. It's on television and <laughs> Disney Plus now. It's a Di- Disney owns ABC. Disney yep. owns Disney. They Disney do. does Disney Night on their Disney show yep. called Dancing with the Stars. Uh, Disney does not use the original recordings of the songs in the show. Why? Yeah. I don't want to listen to some clot. Try to sing I Can Show You the World. I'm going to blow is it, my brains out. What was the really bad one that ticked me off last night? I don't remember. There was I one. don't remember all of that. It's not live music, right? They're just no, it's, to well, a track. So sometimes there's a guy. But No, it's live music. Why is it live? We don't want to hear that. We want to hear the <laughs> recording. It's live music by Rachel Live. Stupid. Shout out. Stupid. I pointed out at the wrong camera. This camera. <laughs> Shout <laughs> out. <laughs> Anyway, that makes me you know what? Cut it out. Anyway, so we watched uh, Moneyball. No. What? <laughs> we watched Money Moneyball? Moneyball. 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 You said no, and I had a struck. I'm like, did we watch the rookie? <laughs> Baseball. <laughs> <laughs> we watched Moneyball, um, 2011, Brad Pitt and Jonah Hill. So um, I told I tell my friends about <coughs> this podcast, right? And they're yeah. like, what movie are you watching? And I said, a baseball movie. And they named like 10 baseball movies bef- before <laughs> I remembered the name of Moneyball. They're like, Fever Pitch. I was like, no. Angels in the Outfield. The Angels in the Outfield. No. The <laughs> Natural. No. No. <laughs> Moneyball, baby. I watched Moneyball. It is about the Oakland A's in 2004 to three, one, one, two. One to two. Two to <laughs> three season. Oh, it, doesn't it start? Uh, the, it's the end right. of the one to two season. They lose it's, it's, in two thousand. I just remember it's w- starting yeah. the movie and it said the date. It was like April two thousand one. I went, oh, they're about to hit nine eleven and they don't even know. Oh my god, nine eleven hit nine eleven. <laughs> what? Nine <laughs> eleven hit nine eleven. It hit the twin towers. Yeah, that's the mm-hmm. some Saudi Arabia too soon. did. It's fair. Home it's run. Too, it's too Home soon. <laughs> It's not too soon. It's been 20,000 years. Yeah, I know. I'm just kidding. It's allowed to be funny now. <laughs> but just enough uh, time. No. Tragedies are If you're never a 9-11 funny. survivor and you're mad that we think 9-11 is funny, please write to us. Comedy at comedy is at tragedy plus time <laughs> or yeah. something like that? Please write to us at mm. suplexthesticks at gmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> so my first note about this movie is in all caps because uh, it doesn't make sense and I had to Google it. So the president of baseball for the A's, not Brad Pitt's character, whose name mm-hmm. I won't forget, but the man in the big office. Steven. Who he keeps asking for money uh, is Bobby Kotick. And I 
literally the first word, the first utterance I had about this movie is why the hell is Bobby Kotick in this movie? <laughs> and he, if you don't know who Bobby Kotick is, he is like the CEO, president, whatever of Activision Blizzard, the video yeah. game company that makes like Call of Duty and Overwatch and stuff and World of Warcraft. He's their CEO. And he's in this movie for, he's got like solid five minutes of screen time, isn't yeah. it? In two or three scenes. And apparently it was a favor. Yeah. He's right? A, he's Do you a have a friend, fact? Well, he's a friend of the director. Yeah. And they did it like a scratch your back. Oh, I want to be in your movie. <laughs> that and, or no, no, he, um, the director of the movie went to him and was like, hey, give me feedback on this scene. And he said, this is terrible. Let me rewrite it oh. and star as long as you help produce something for Call of Duty. They did like a video or something. Oh. Wow. It's a little tradesy. That's dumb. Tradesies are cool. I didn't like it. I thought Bobby Kotick was fine though for just being a big wig fat head I dumb mean, I didn't know who he was but C-suite rich man. I really liked all the financier characters. <laughs> like I yeah. don't know why. They just had well, like a call to me like that guy at the very then. end. Yeah. <clears throat> Let me pull up the outline. So uh, th- it, the, the Oakland A's have a winning season the 2001-2002 season. They have mm-hmm. a winning season. They make it to the playoffs. They lose. Yep. Huh, the, losers. Then, in poverty baseball team fashion, they got the team. Uh, they have a bunch of expensive contracts. Not expensive by, you know, the, the top dogs, the, your Dodgers and Red Sox and Yankees of the world. And they, they got to offload these contracts. They have aging old stars. They trade them away. Cut down payroll. Um, and that's, that's kind of where we start with um, Brad Pitt's character, whose name is Billy Bean. Billy Bean. Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean with an E at the end. <gasps> we didn't call him Mr. Bean. Like, what a missed opportunity. Um, I mean, that is... They called him Billy because the last name Bean was too funny. They were like, we can't... <laughs> this is a serious movie. We can't call him <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Bean. They did a couple times Excuse and it made me, me chuckle. Mr. Bean, can you please get this baseball some Gatorade? <laughs> what? <laughs> get this baseball... <laughs> what? <laughs> You know, the classic trope from the Mr. Bean movies where yeah. he gets Gatorade. He gets Gatorade. And, and douses baseballs, baseballs with them, yeah, to quench their thirst. What the hell has this show become? I, don't know. <laughs> well, I was thinking of the soda scene. The soda scene in yeah. what? The movie. The guy wants free soda. Oh, yeah. yeah. But dollar. I couldn't think of the word soda faster than Gatorade. Oh, wow. The only thing that happens with Gatorade <laughs> in this movie is it flies across oh the clubhouse. Oh, my God. That's true. Uh, Brad Pitt fit does of throw a lot of items in this So movie. many yeah. things. He so throws a lot and he eats a lot. Oh, my God. So he gets Works a call. Out a lot. He, oh. he, he, gets a, he goes to the president, and the president's like, beep, mop, no money. And he's like, a little bit of money? And he's like, no money. No, no money. <laughs> and then we cut to what Carl calls the baseball council. <laughs> 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 Wait. He's talking <laughs> about... This is the scout room. The scouts. Yeah, the baseball <laughs> scouts. I feel like they the all should have been the round table smoking yeah, for going like, yeah, Shane. Well, I, yeah, huh. but, yeah, maybe 30 years ago, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, this was a movie this, the this was all about uh, chewing oh, tobacco. That's Everything. true. There's a dog mm-hmm. coughing. She's eating her foot into a f- frenzy and coughing. So he's in a room with his scouts, and here's the issue, is you have old school baseball methodology that's a word yeah. right mentality, Baseball, yeah. mentality whatever yeah and then we have new school which gets literally invented in this movie um and i'll talk about the, the present which, in a minute or at the end but yeah okay go ahead no the, you're good okay so the scouts are all talking about so they've got to essentially they got to rebuild their roster with stars there's two ways to do that or you do trades which often costs a lot of money. And then you've got to trade players to get players and they're trading all their players away and probably getting either cash considerations or prospects. So prospects being minor league players, single A, double A, triple A kids fresh out of um, college. Um, and so they're talking about these prospects and the, it's a bunch of old heads. They're like old, like sixties. <laughs> they were old. Mm. Um, and they're talking about what you would call the intangibles in baseball, which is to say non stat related things. Mm. Uh, one of the ones was I wrote some down cause they were making me mad. Like just saying he's got all the right stuff. Uh, and then got this, a good swing. It pops off the bat. It pops off the bat. The one that yeah. was, uh, uh, that I thought was hilarious slash awful was, uh, 
I like this guy, but his girlfriend is ugly, and that proves he yeah. has no confidence. Yeah. <laughs> Wild. I mean, Wild He's the kind of guy that's, when he walks into the room, his dick's been there for two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> what Hilarious. Are we, what, are we, what are we doing here, guys? I'm going to steal that one. What's not, the problem? That's the opposite yeah. of ugly girlfriend. Uh, yeah. you, you get a two minute early dick. <laughs> yeah. He's <laughs> like, uh, just standing in the doorway? What's he doing? Now it's that's like, punctual. Yeah. Um, oh, man. And already, Bailey's like, sick and tired of the old heads because i guess they've sucked for a thousand years although they did just make well, the playoffs teams keeps losing yeah well ben there. there's new circumstances now they're gutting the team and he's like you can't if you think like the yankees in here you're gonna lose to the yankees out there i don't know billy that sounds like fortune cookie talk no it's just logic it's like yeah. man there's so many good lines of this movie i can quote so much of it now <laughs> so, so many times. <laughs> yeah so billy goes to the um rip a dip this team name the cleveland indians uh, they're the no, guardians. Yeah. They're the guardians now because we've decided that mm. Chief Wahoo is not a good uh, mascot anymore. Second mm. most offensive Indian chief name in baseball. Second to the old Braves mascot, which was an actual Indian. Okay, and he literally didn't literally, but he had a teepee on the in the <laughs> stands. And whenever the Braves hit a home run, he'd come out and do a dance. No. And his name was, <laughs> and this is not a bit, his name was, and my dad remembers looking up to this, like this is his mascot when he was a kid, Chief Nakahoma. No. Knock a homer. <laughs> mm. That was pretty bad. Knock a homer. Yeah. Uh, That's the most offensive. I don't like that. Chief Knock a homer, uh, it goes without saying, has not existed since the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in the oh, 80s. Man. Who knows? So he goes to the Indians uh, to work out a trade deal. They want a player. He's like, what will you give me? Will you give me this guy for this guy? And he sees Jonah Hill's character. Mm-hmm. kind of Peter the, Brand. Peter one Brand, dude yeah. agrees, and then Peter whispers in his ear, and then the dude's out. So Billy's like, what the hell? You just told... And then follows Peter to his cubicle. He's like, what did you tell him? Who are you? Yeah, grills him for a <laughs> while. And then what, what I thought the real power move was is when he just walked away and then mm-hmm. Peter followed him to the parking garage <laughs> and kind of explains like there's a bunch of these old heads and they're not thinking about baseball the right way. Because if you look at the metrics, what is baseball about? You need to get people on base. That's how you win. It's not the intangibles. If you can get guys with better on base percentages than the other team, you're going to win just by the fact that you have more guys on base. Um, and it's not just ABs. A lot of people look at batting percentages, batting averages. Oh, he's hitting 260. He's having a great year. This guy's hitting 204. He's terrible. This guy hits 315. He's the best player on the team, blah, 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 blah. But that doesn't take walks into account. Um, a walk being four missed pitches in the strike zone. You just get to take a base without hitting. I was hitting. about to ask. Um, yeah. Do, you'll have to stop me when I do yeah, assumed yeah. knowledge. So full disclosure, we're four people on a podcast. I watch what? over well over 100 baseball games a year. It's a lot. A I very, watched well over zero. Yeah, I'm a very old man. Well under zero. I was about to say, I was like, well yeah, over zero. Like a is a lot of games. You, Carl, you played? I, yeah, but it was like T-ball. And oh, like I played very, T-ball. Like a little bit in like middle school. I, played, oh. yeah, I don't know. And then Danielle I, I has not good. osmosis exposure from living in the house with me for six years. <laughs> yes. Oh, six years. We, oh, boy. Oh. It's, our it's, our it's our anniversary on Saturday. Saturday. So oh. two days. La, la, la. La, 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 la. Tell them congrats in the chat. Yeah, um, we're not. We'll uh, <laughs> give marriage advice next week. We're yeah, really course. good at it. Yeah, everybody is so good at marriage advice. What are we talking about? Uh, baseball. So please stop me. Walks. Nah. Yeah. Yes. He talks to Peter Brand. Peter Brand lets him know the medieval thinking of baseball and that he's look. They look at it wrong, and they he kind of like, oh, you're an interesting guy, Pete, because he went to school for Yale uh, or yeah. to Yale for economics. Yeah. So he's like, huh? How did an economics guy get into baseball? Is the question. So uh, he ends up trading. For slash hiring Pete as his assistant GM. Yep. Do we understand baseball front office hierarchy? Um, <laughs> I think by the end of this movie, I did. Because Carl kept Can calling the manager the coach. Well, because he's to, a coach. But yeah, he's, he's not a coach. But he, but he is a coach. But he's not a coach. But the manager has coaches. Guess. Or what do you hierarchy. think the hierarchy is? You've got the team owner, yep. which is CEO of Activision. Uh, then the GM the VP of Oakland, roughly, yeah. And then as far as this movie goes, owner, GM, assistant GM, sure. manager, 
Coach? Coaches. Coaches. So, yeah, that's essentially it. how it works. You've got your front of office. <laughs> um, which or front office, which you would call your general manager, or yeah, your general manager and all the assistant GMs and financial people and all the nerds, all the rich dudes in suits. That's your front office, and G- the GM mm-hmm. is our boy Billy, and the assistant GM is our boy Pete. So they're front office people. Then you have the on field staff. So you've got your manager, and he's like he was Philip Seymour Hoffman in this movie. Yep. What every other sport would call a coach. Except for, I think football calls the managers as well. Um, mm. Soccer, that soccer, was, soccer yeah. that is. Uh, not. American I didn't understand football. why they would let Peter Brand go. Peter Brand is who? Oh, the Jonah guy. Hill. I guess he was just such a low ranking peon that but they took, he they wasn't the GM. Him, so I was wondering why they would let that resource go. Money. Because they seemed like they took, like, maybe that's what it is, but I was like, why would you let him go? He seems like the kind of new. He's the brain trust, right? Yeah, he's also place. young yeah. though. But he was young, and yeah, if they you kick yeah. around enough cash, maybe. Um, so yeah, I just thought it was interesting. I was like, why would they let him go? But yeah, the manager has a bunch of coaches on the field, though: uh, pitching coach, bench coach, first base coach, third base coach, hitting coach, and others. So that's he manages his coaching staff is the thing. Um, but yeah, he in any other sport you would have a coach and assistant coaches. In baseball, you have a manager and coaches. And he's in charge of the lineup. The manager does set the yep. lineup. That part of the movie was 100% accurate. The manager does set the lineup. But we'll get to that in a bit. Um, so we got Peter Brand. Um, Which, my favorite character. Yeah, of course. He's great. Of course, right? That's... Jonah, Jonah Hill. I was. I didn't think Jonah Hill was going to be good. It's like my first... I mean, I haven't seen a lot of Jonah Hill movies, but I've never oh, seen man. a serious role. He's the. He's good in everything, man. Yeah, but that I've seen. He's Super Bad is one of the greatest comics, and that's like his I've breakout that. role. Like, I gotta see that. His him like I did not expect to like the pairing of like Brad Pitt and Jonah Hill as much because they were like a perfect like Brad Pitt's also got really good comedic timing, and I was like it's yeah. funny because it's Pitt and Hill because they're like total uh, opposites like yeah, that's true. And I was like what are the <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> nice. Jonah Hill does a great job of playing like the kicked dog, mm-hmm. yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's got he's endearing mm-hmm. and he's good. But he's also like everybody kind of shoves him around. He mm-hmm. he, he does a brilliant job. Of he playing never that has role. like confidence. He always understands the assignment. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't have confidence. His, char- his characters, they're always yeah. like learning something or. Well, in this one, it was like growing. He, he's kind of like yeah. the Very Samwise underdog. Gamgee of this movie. Yeah. Like he's the unsung, pure-hearted hero. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it um it almost wasn't Jonah Hill. Oh, who was it? Almost really. <gasps> um, there was. Um. A production guy that was working on the movie who for whatever reason was tied to dimitri martin the comedian <laughs> yeah. and oh dimitri my. was Jokes on set like talking to brad pitt filming stuff like it was his mm. his role and then a production guy got fired and i guess mm. dimitri wow went with him. huh so this like, is jonah was... hill this is a better movie for not having dimitri martin in it yeah yeah i don't think i could see him as not him like it'd be right. too hard he's yeah it's he's too iconic right um anyway he he gets peter and he brings peter to the scouting table um to talk about the players that they want to sign and they've got literally every wall is covered in placards of first name first initial last names and all these guys and um they start the scouts the old heads start pitching to um what's his face Billy, Judas, Billy Bean? whatever. I don't know why Brian <laughs> popped in my name. That's in incorrect. My Lots of B's. Brad, Billy. Yep. That's it. Just two. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's hard. Peter Brent. And Brent. he's like, I like none of these guys. Because they start giving him more intangible BS. He's a five-tool player. <laughs> and he's like, I don't like yeah. any of these guys. And then Pete starts re- He starts doing the point thing. Talk to me <laughs> yeah, when yeah. I point at you. I love it, that. Am mm. I supposed to talk now? Yes. When I point when at I you, point you at talk. You. And then, then like <laughs> yeah. a couple minutes later, he's like, don't make me point. Because he like has him do Do you get math. or do I have to point at Pete again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he basically starts going and, and saying what we said earlier about that. We want people who can get on base. Yes, this guy's technically worse. Yes, he's slow. Um, like they get a, the, a Chris Pratt's character is an old aging for catchers like he's got nerve damage in his arm Mm -hmm. and for a catcher that's bad because a lot of catchers you're doing pickoff plays um so the bases are all 90 feet from one another 
um, that's a standard distance, but home to second is significantly longer because you're cutting mm-hmm. the diamond. Right. Um, so, and a lot of when, when dudes are trying to steal, oftentimes they're going from first to second. So you have to be able to, from your crouching stance, even snap that baseball over the pitcher's head and over to second base in time to catch a stealing player. He couldn't do that anymore. So he's worthless as a catcher. Hmm. But they want him as a first baseman. You're often getting thrown the ball to get runners out at first, um, you know, and, and he can hit. But he's notorious for getting walks. So they want this dude. doesn't matter if he can throw. doesn't matter if he can hit. He can get walks. Where I didn't understand is why not have him as DH but I guess you want a guy who can actually hit as DH, not a guy that... Right, not DH. a guy who's walking. So designated hitter? Designated oh, hitter, yeah. yeah. I could have put it's, that together. It's a thing yeah. in both leagues as of last year, Last year, I think. But originally in the National League, which is where the Braves play, um, pitchers had to hit. So he was that was the ninth guy in your batting lineup, uh, the eight fielders and then the pitcher. Mm-hmm. In the American League, it was your eight fielders and then your um, designated hitter. So it saved pitchers <coughs> the job. So uh, now the leagues are the same and nothing is real and I'm sad. But oh. nothing is real. That's the only new rule I don't like, actually, yeah. is the uh, universal DH. I think it's a boner of a rule. I don't like oh. it at all. Uh, but yeah, so I was like, why not just have him as your DH? But I guess he'd be your designated walker, not a hitter. So whatever. And it's a cooler story to have a first baseman that's a catcher. It's weird. That's way so. more inspirational. Um, he learned a new skill. Yeah, I had a. I, I did heard. love that. Like, it you, Billy went to his house to make the call. He's very personal. Like, it yep. shows that he like actually cares about the. And the the joke that the one guy had, where he's like, "What about the fans?" Chris Pratt's character's like, "What about the fans?" He's like, "Yeah, maybe one of them can do it." Like, <laughs> do you tell, maybe they can do first. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That was like one of the. I think that was. One of the. Yeah, I think it was ad libbed because yeah, Pitt kind of breaks character unless he's like good one. Like, was that a scout or a hitting coach? I couldn't quite get it. I think, I think it was he was in the scouts table. It was yeah, a coach know. because he had to train. Whoever right, right. So hitting or feeling, whatever. It's part coach. of the baseball council, yeah. Uh, the baseball council. <laughs> <laughs> We've decreed. <laughs> like, yeah, they go to Pratt yeah. and uh, like cold call him on his phone. They were like, open the door. That yeah, we're outside. Funny. I loved Pardon the. <laughs> I loved <What>? the whole <laughs> like Billy wouldn't take no from an answer from anybody. He would just kind of like walk out mm-hmm. mid objection. I mm-hmm. loved that. That's really fun. And yeah. also, when you're on a phone call and you get the answer you want, you hang up. You hang up. Yeah, that was oh, good. Yeah. I don't know if that's always good advice, but it worked here. I'm gonna start doing it. <laughs> let us know. How, let us know in a few weeks. Lots of uh, old Nokia phone throwing and conference table phone button mashing. Yep. Mm-hmm. Just really good old tech. Old you can't quotes button technology. mash anymore. It's not the same. No, yeah. yeah. I mean, I have Just a desk phone. Screen. I have a desk phone. I could mash. But now even those are starting to have screens. I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, I work for the government, though. Mine's old. Mm, it's true. Mm. Just like everything. You work in a Soviet block building. It's terrible. <laughs> the bathrooms don't work, but it's fine. Um, mm. it's I liked the I scene. I had a note. Oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. I like the scene where Billy has Pete uh, run up. It's like one of the first things he has him do. He has him run up scouting reports or whatever on uh-huh. three players. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you didn't do just three players, did you? And, and Pete goes, I did 47. <laughs> Actually, 51. I don't know why I lied just now. That was one of my favorite lines. <laughs> it's it's like my I don't know why I lied just there. there. It was awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I love just Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill is a character actor. is amazing. He's so good. Yeah. You're Jonah. right, though, Danielle. He's not, he always plays not confident characters. Mm-hmm. Which is, Carl I think, said what underdog. That was yeah. 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 He played a kind of confident character in that new, what was it? Uh, What's the one with Leonardo DiCaprio and the the meteor is going to hit Earth? Don't look out. And he don't plays look. like oh, an advisor. Yeah. yeah, he was pretty confident in that one, but yeah, usually it's pretty underdog. We, we're kind of in a that, new era of Jonah Hill, though. In the, mm-hmm. in the Skinny Jonah. Time. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, I was just going to say, this movie reminded me a lot of Inside Lewin Davis and kind of like the... Slice of Life kind of movie? What? Slice of Life, but it's also... There were no cats. Like, he's taking a loss at every turn almost until it starts to work out. See, but yeah, it was but, a lot of just hits. But the tone of this was hopeful. Yes. Whereas in Inside Lewin Davis, it was not. It it's just reminded very... me of it in the, the dominoes of yeah. like bad things happening and him trying to... He just handled it a lot better. <laughs> like, it is a drama, he's though. And you he's made been the, to more therapy. You made the point that I don't like dramas. And I had to go, yeah, but this isn't about relationships and people's family. Like all the shots of the, of the scenes of this family, like I don't give a shit about this mm-hmm. guy's family. Yeah. I don't care. Well, I, just, I want 20 more minutes just, in the scouting room of them arguing. That's what I want. They need to sh- big... shoehorn in that song at the end. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. why they had the family. 
I just thought like for this story, since it's based on a true story, like you would rather normally watch a documentary of the story versus Mm. a movie. Right. But I will say for a movie, this felt a little bit documentary ish, Mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. Well, Um, and they used actual footage from mm -hmm. games mixed with shots of the cast, but made to look like it was old footage. Yeah. Until the Chris Pratt scene, I was telling her, I'm like, every baseball player we've seen has been a real it's been footage from a real game or yeah. like a real player that quickly Which, became not the case. But um, yeah, yeah, because it kind of bothered me. Not that I paid that much attention, but like, it's different than obviously the who they casted to play those characters. So like, seeing footage of the actual people is a little weird. In fact, one of the big things we get is so the A's are a poverty club in more ways than one. They currently have the worst stadium in baseball that we're traveling to see next year before they tear it down. Yeah, uh, nice. the Oakland Coliseum. But the A's trade for an aging Yankee. It's actually the Yankee that hit the home run that ended their season the previous year, which I thought was interesting. Oh. Um, and he is coming from the Bronx. And I believe this was old Yankee Stadium at the time, the house that Bay built. Um, it's now, I think in 2007, uh, we have new Yankee Stadium, which mm. is dumb. Um, and so this dude goes from highest payroll team to one of the lowest payroll teams. I don't know. At this point, it's either the A's or the Tampa Bay Rays. Same story today. Both teams are really? poverty bottom of the barrel, um, but the Rays are better at playing money ball than Oakland is right now. Uh, and the dude's like, you know, the clubhouse just sucks and the Pepsi machine takes a dollar takes a and he's never yeah. heard of that. And he's kind of like yeah. yeah, he's just kind of bummed want out. The money on the field. Yeah, yeah. He, Where's my dollar? My, he's <laughs> like, my soda money? <laughs> With the whole money on the field? My soda money is on the field? My, my I love that resolution, too, where he's like, I, want, I don't want my guys yeah, paying for soda. I wanted you to fill my machines for three years. And he's like, no, I'm not playing. <laughs> it's like, yeah, and that's where like stuff, he yeah. starts to, because we've got a whole, there's a whole, this whole thing with Billy doesn't watch the games. And mm. he doesn't get involved with the players because it makes cutting them harder, which I get. Um, I definitely get the doesn't watch the games thing. And that comes mm-hmm. back later. It's not out of the whole player separation thing. He doesn't watch the games out of superstition. I because figured, yeah. baseball is the most superstitious sport that exists. Huh. It's probably baseball and motorsport are probably close, mm. but I would give the edge to baseball because there's just so, I mean, you've seen the weird shit I do. I was yeah. going to say, I, I feel like I remember you talking about like standing up or something. Uh, or yeah, when we won the divisional series against the Yankees to play the Astros to get into the World Series in 2020, mm. which we lost to the Dodgers. Rip. Um, I wore a yellow hat for the whole postseason because we kept winning. I have a yellow raised hat that was like a promotional hat years and years ago. Um, mm. And it's my only non-fitted hat. And my head got fat, and I can't wear my fit hats anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's adjustable, so I wear my yellow hat all the time. Nice. Uh, and during that game, um, I remember I will never forget Mike Brossow hitting a home run off of a roll to Chapman to put us up in that game. Uh, I stood the whole game because that was really fun. Where do you, no, where do you, you weren't think the there. Superstition oh, I wasn't came there for from. that one. I don't know. I think it like might, in general, it might have come like, from just baseball starting in the 1800s and just everything was spooky boogans back then. And, and you know, <laughs> and that just carried over. Yeah, to like the lo- it wasn't the era of logic. It was the era of industrialization. Mm. Um, but I'm not sure. It's, it's also just really f- fun in a way to be superstitious about baseball and romantic. How can you not be it romantic? It adds to the lore. Baseball? How could you not be romantic? Uh, it does add to the lore. In fact, there, so there's, a, I wanted to talk about this at the end of the show, but we'll do it now. Um, when Billy gets the Red Sox interview, they talk about the breaking the curse of the Bambino. And mm-hmm. I had to pause the movie <laughs> and explain to Daniel what the curse of the Bambino was. Yeah. So Babe Ruth is the Bambino, uh, yep. the great Bambino. Um, and he played originally, he's known for playing for. What team? New York. New York. The New York Yankees. Yankees. That is not the Nailed first it. team he played for. Really? Babe Ruth originally played for the Boston Red Sox, the Yankees' biggest rival. <laughs> and uh, they won a, a couple of World Series. They won, I think, five of the first ten or some ridiculous number of World Series. The Red Sox were the team in the 1910s. <laughs> in 1918... Or sorry, in 1918, they won a World Series. 1919, the World Series is actually fixed. It was called the Black Sox scandal. The White Sox players threw the World Series in order to get money from a prop better. 
crazy. Huh. Uh, changed a lot of the rules. In 1920, the Red Sox had a blockbuster trade with the New York Yankees that sent Babe Ruth to New York. And then the Red Sox did not win another World Series from 1918 until 2006. Jeez. <laughs> Jeez. And that, that was the curse of the Bambino. Uh, six or four. I'm unclear on that. Let me I look it, it up. Was, How many teams are there? Four? So, I think it was four. I think it was four. Uh, sorry, not six, four. So that was the curse of the Bambino. They get rid of Babe. They did not win until after where this movie took place. They did so, break the curse of the Bambino, the movie set at the, at the end, by using Moneyball tactics. Yeah. Hmm. So they wanted Billy... To kind of break that curse. They wanted Billy to help break the curse yeah. and bring on the new era of baseball. Because you, you still heard all the um, talking heads and the fake radio footage and all that stuff of them talking about how the strategy's dumb and stupid. And even they give the credit to them going on that 20-win streak to the manager, uh, yeah. Bill Seymour <laughs> yeah. Hoffman's character, Art. Um, Which, it's his managerial still uh, skill, st- skills in spite of the roster. Mm-hmm. Um, which is kind yeah, of but is, earlier in the movie, it was like, let's blame the GM. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like it wasn't a fair. That's kind of how it works. No, no fair. front of office guy is ever going to get credit, with the exception of like a big signing. Like you get a Shohei Otani, it's like, yay. But they blamed him. Well, I know you said that was just movie. Like that doesn't actually happen. They would. It sometimes happens. They would have blamed the manager. The manager. They they may have blamed. In, in all likelihood, they would have blamed the poverty of the team. Probably, mm-hmm. that's kind of the thing they get like the like the current athletics are trash uh yeah because they're the worst team in baseball because they have the worst name they, have, they don't have the worst, they have the worst name. Name danielle doesn't think the oak I athletics. hate the, the a's because every team is athletic it's a team called the reds i didn't say i liked the reds <laughs> there are teams named after socks i'm not there saying i love those i'm not yeah. saying i like the other teams i'm just saying i don't like this team what is what is the, the, mas- the it's athletics? Just, it's just a letter. What's the mascot for the as- athletics? An elephant holding a base a uh, baseball bat in its trunk while balancing on a giant baseball. Moving on. <laughs> uh, what? Yes. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense because they're an a dumb elephant. Team. No, I didn't an understand. Elephant, an elephant holding holding a baseball bat in its trunk while balancing <laughs> on a baseball. It's a very athletic a elephant. It's an athletic standard elephant. size baseball. Uh, yeah. It's either a giant baseball or a very small elephant mm. with a very small bat. <laughs> what if it's, Tiny a mini, if it's a mini elephant? Didn't I'm I back a, in. Didn't we have a point? What were we talking about? I it doesn't know. matter. Where are we at in the story? Let's talk about the manager getting grumpy. So they do the money ball stuff. They sign the players they want to sign. Art, who's the manager. Manager, this is true. So that's the lineups. It's one of the <clears> first <throat> things that the manager has to do about an hour-ish before game time. I get pings on my phone all the time. Lineups are set. That close to the game? Yeah, it's pretty close. So and there's lineups, like a penalty. They deviate from that, or how does that work? They or once like, the lineup is set, you have to play these players. You have to start with these players, and it's okay. so lineups are two things. It is what players playing where, and then you set the batting order as well. So he's batting first, he's batting second, he's okay. batting third. Blah 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 blah. So normally the shitty guy goes in ninth. He's the cleanup hitter. Um, so then so, why it's like public record? Or like uh, how it to, gets published, so both teams essentially... Is it on their permanent record? What do you mean? I'm just kidding. No, so to... what it does, Carl, in, in mm. matter of fact, is both managers set their lineups and they bring them to the crew chief umpire. And then the umpire notes it down, and then it goes... To the okay. Media. So Got then how sure. do they do things like at the on the like 20th game when Chris Pratt goes to... Because the bat, so, it seemed like it was a spur-of-the-moment decision, like, never it, mind, you're going to bat. It was, it was or it wasn't, so that... Um, can what, you what we, what, can you switch it up? You can switch. Um, so when you switch a guy, you have to fill his position. So there tends to be some shuffling there. So a lot of times, like oh, the there's a right-handed or a left-handed pitcher. It's like oh, we want a right-handed bat. So let's pull our current left fielder out, move our center field guy to left field because he can play both and put a new center fielder. So you got to cover everything. So you got to cover everything. In that instance, it was the bottom of the ninth inning. So you only get to the bottom of the ninth inning if a home team is losing. Right? Mm -hmm. So if if the home team wins, it's whatever. That's inconsequential. So it's the bottom of the ninth (laughs) inning. Essentially, you can make substitutions without really worrying too much about what player goes where because it's na- it's do or die. Um, you're yeah. going to tie this game or win it, and that's going to be that. Um, but so, yes, you can. You just have to, like, you are replacing that. You're taking him out of the lineup forever. You can't put him back in. 
Um, and, you know, if you have him out for a reason, like he's exhausted and needs a rest day, it's like, well, he can come in and just hit, but then we're going to pinch run him, which they talked about in the movie, which means they do a dual substitution. They would pinch hit the guy there. Chris Pratt hits. Chris Pratt gets on base. Then they pull Chris Pratt out for a fast guy. And then your lineup is a mess, right? Um, what so, is this game? This is getting intense. <laughs> Baseball is not. It's it's so much different than like I feel like most Americans watch football these days, and baseball is just different, man. It's it's, it's super old school. It feels more complex and like quicker. Like I've been really, to, I've been to a couple games, and it's just like if you're not paying attention, you're done for. In Which baseball, I guess is the same with any quicker. sport. They're but. quicker now. Well, that's not true. So football, like there, I think there is something like. 20 or 30 minutes more of play like action playing happening like stuff in motion hmm. in baseball than football than your average NFL football game interesting uh, and it's because in football you run a play for 20 seconds mm-hmm. and then you wait for a thousand eons for the next play to get <laughs> called and you know a hundred coca-cola commercials to happen Carrie Underwood so yeah Carrie Underwood sings waiting all day for a Sunday night Dave Mills favorite song uh, what's not. the sport that I watch that irritates you the Hoc- least? Oh, I thought you were going to say the most. Most is hockey. What's the um, least? Because I watch so many sports. Probably baseball. I don't know. Yeah? Probably baseball. What about like, so ambient noise? You've talked about how like no, football. No, football is the ambient noise. That's, like That's the ambient noise she likes When it's a f- fall <laughs> day, I've got dinner cooking, the windows are open, <laughs> the sun is shining. I'm relaxing on the couch and football is just on. I'm reading. That I f- is I find that the, the, right. the vibe. The cheering in football seems to be more like there's screaming happening mm. constantly in football. So there's that sound like cushion. It's also it's hard nice. because historically baseball's made you less angry. Yes. But football the Rays. pisses me off. The Rays have gotten better. The Rays. So when I started watching the Rays, they were garbage. Ugh. Like so we used to get $13 pressure. seats. Now the Rays, through like money ball tactics, and you know how they talk about the A's changing the game? Yeah. The Rays in the past decade have changed the game two times to the point where rules have had to be made uh, well, through, through both the shift and uh, what is called bullpen days. I will get into neither of those things because we're not a sport <laughs> podcast. Yeah, that's too inside baseball. Yeah, it's yeah. really inside baseball. So, no, that's I really understand. I was in heaven watching this movie as a Rays fan because mm. I'm like, we do this shit too because we're poor. And, and I've, I've watched us be the, Rays the worst. The A's. I've watched us be the worst right. team in baseball, and I've watched us be one of the best teams in baseball within a decade. And it's blowing my mind and making my hair turn gray. So. <laughs> Where are we at in the movie? Oh, the coach, the manager. The manager. Mm-hmm. So the manager set the lineup. So he's been given, he's been told, play Chris Pratt at first. Chris Pratt is not a first baseman. First base mm-hmm. is really hard position to play. Uh, the easiest position is probably be like right field or third base. Um, first base is hard. So uh, Art just All decides, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to play our first baseman in first base because he sets the lineup. Uh, which is true and on a level fair. They make yeah. him out to be the villain. That's a fair thing. He's not bought in on this newfangled technology baseball. Um, so screw you. I set the lineup for my team. He yeah. wouldn't extend his contract either. So he's playing right. for a. Con- yeah. He wants a good contract yeah. from another team. You know, he wants to justify to- his actions because he's like, I need to be able to explain myself in job interviews in the winter. So yeah, I'm doing what like, I have I to go, do to make sense. Yeah. I want to go manage the Cardinals or someone that doesn't suck next year. And you're sabotaging me by making me play a catcher whose arm doesn't work <laughs> in first base. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, apparently so. uh, real life art. Yeah. Hated how he was portrayed in this movie. Aww. Which mm. they do kind of make him the well, bad yeah, guy. Well, yeah, you got skeevy looking. But it's a movie and you have to have Philip that Seymour Yeah, Hoffman. you have to have a villain. He, uh, yeah. If you look it up, though, Philip Seymour Hoffman looked a lot really? like art. Ooh. Really? Really. Good, good, uh, good casting. Uh, I don't like managers that wear uniforms. Mm. It just feels wrong. It's like you're not part of the you're part of the team, but you're not. A lot of managers. Like, don't wear the uniforms these days. I mean, by uniforms, I mean the baseball uniform. Yeah. Um, like it's the full, cr- what, the, what the players are wearing so and they have a number. like a, a polo or a button up? So, no, no. Uh, what our manager does is he wears like the warm-up cover shirt or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then the like the, the windbreaker pants, yeah. He'll wear like a windbreaker. Uh, okay. or something. Like you're not gonna go bat. So like, what are you? You doing? actually got me a manager. He might. 
warm up cover. <laughs> yeah. Imagine like the long. I did for crim- crimble one year. That's what I prefer. I like the manager to look a little more casual and not be like, "I'm on the team too." <laughs> so oh, seeing man. Art oh, just man. be like, "Wanna belong?" Seeing Art be like fat and dumpy in his chair and <laughs> arguing it was so funny. <laughs> he didn't wear it well. No. Mm. Um, so I thought he looked like a coach though. What did y'all yeah. think of the retaliation? Because. I think Daniel was a little confused. Him trading when he just so started cutting put people. Him on the lineup. When well, he was cutting people. Go ahead. I wasn't confused. <laughs> it was just like this drastic measure. Yeah. But I guess it's less drastic than having to fire your manager mid season. So the the yeah, that, which he had the power to do. That was the other thing that I didn't realize was a thing that you could just trade people in the middle of the season. Up until the trade deadline. So there's a okay. deadline and that's with the whole phone and he was calling a bunch of the teams again. Gotcha. That was the trade deadline day. So that was a can, great scene. You can that move was. around until the deadline, and then your team is set. That's crazy. So I think it's halfway through when the season. In, oh, it's halfway through? Okay. I think so. I'm a bad baseball fan, so don't <laughs> correct me if I correct, Definitely correct are. me if I'm wrong, but that, that's the kind of stuff where I, mm. I, it loses me a little bit because <laughs> I just can't be bothered to remember anything. I'm watching seven sports at a time, people. Baseball is <laughs> my favorite, but I don't know all the rules. Um, yeah, so he, um, he being Billy is sick and tired of Art not playing his guys. So he trades away all the guys that Art was playing instead of yeah. the guys that he wanted, which is hilarious. <laughs> and I loved the You're way he was telling team. Art, like, Power you can't move. play this you guy first. You are out of your thing. mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't play him uh, first. He plays for the Cardinals now. It was great. Fantastic. He traded Pena. He, he paused for like 20 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> like, just, you can so see the processing. Good. He's like, what are you doing, Billy? <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> dude, I love this. This movie, movie does what a really good job. Like, I don't know the ins and outs of baseball at all, but it does a yep. really good job of showing you everybody's motivation. Even like the the interviewer, like the commentators, it shows you everybody's perspective, and it does a right. really good job of it not it being like clear still. Like, I I didn't have a hard time following it, you know, and I don't know the sport at all. So, kudos yeah. to them. Let's briefly yeah. wrap up the story. And then we'll come around to, I want to know what y'all were confused by or questions that y'all have. Yep. So basically they, f- they, he trades the guys away and it works. <coughs> uh, the A's go on a franchise record setting 20 win streak, um, which really quick, the superstition of him not watching games. It's the 20th game. His daughter calls. Don't tell me the score. And he goes like, yeah, he's like, that was a different scene. D- uh, right. Whatever. Wait, um, yeah. No, the daughter calls and goes, Dad, are you watching the game? Are you at the stadium? He goes, no, I'm going to go look at prospects in our minor league team. And she goes, turn around. And ever, oh, it's, yeah. it was funny to me that every scene we get with Billy in a truck, he's violently turning around. <laughs> it's, just, <laughs> it's like every time. Was like, he this just dude. doing donuts in that one scene? Like, yeah, I don't know. He turned sense. a bunch. So he goes back to the stadium. And that's when they blow the 11 to 1 lead while he's standing in the tunnel Mm -hmm. watching the team. And he does what I would do and have done all the time. If a game is, if we're winning a game and I turn it on and we start losing, I turn it off and go do something else. That's another superstition (laughs) I have. You know, I will sit, I will stand, edge of the seat, back of the seat, drink in hand, no drink in hand. This couch, that couch. And if nothing works, I turn it off for the betterment of the team and not. A insubstantial number of times it uh, totally works and we win. Mm-hmm. Um, Interesting. So, you know, he does that. He goes to the locker room and they end up taking the lead and winning and, and setting the franchise record 20 yeah. game winning. Streak. He hears Chris Pratt's home run from the locker room somehow. Man, Man that was a good <laughs> I had a TV in the corner. I choked on my chin. Oh, we had a TV. And the TV or the I radio. do love the visual of like the tiny TV or like the radio because it's like this whole movie is about building up like the spectacle of baseball, you know, it's yeah. like the sport that's like bigger than life. There's lore, there's like history. And it's like to see it that small is hilarious. It's like so a great good. visual yeah, and like removing himself from it. We almost, it's, it's almost unfathomable to go back in time and think about watching baseball on a tiny screen, like as far away from us as our TVs are now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, my 55 inch is too small. Yeah. Yeah, 65. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, my 14 inch color set. I got to turn up the dial to make it go loud. It's <laughs> funny. Uh, they win a bunch and then they get into the championship series and then they lose to the with twins who I believe Sad. won the World Series that year. It's kind yep. of a bummer ending, but oh, I mean, it's I know a bummer. it's real life. It's just like, oh. And that guy stayed managing the team until 2015. Uh, he's no longer the general manager. It was a bummer how quick everyone turned on him. He was 100% yeah. right. He's like, this 20, 20 win streak, it means nothing. 
for mm. the season, like for the team. If that, you don't win that, that last year. game, well, if you like, don't win the last game. I feel like narratively we had to hit the gas there because it worked. You know, there's no story once it works. Like you have to kind of yeah. wrap it up. So they did the whole Red Sox job offering. It would have made him the highest paid coach of any sport, apparently. Uh, he turns it down to stay in Oakland for, I think, a myriad of reasons, one of which is he the one money decision he ever made in his career was skipping Stanford scholarship and joining the majors early, and then he sucked. And he said, I will never make a money-based decision ever again. Yeah. Which is a quote I spoiled for myself by reading the Wikipedia in Act 1. Ah, Rip. ruined. Um, <laughs> it just made me sad that he never, like, in real life, he never got his win. He never got his win. Uh, sad. still alive? He's still it's alive. always chasing that dragon. Uh, uh, Pete, by the way... Managing. Pete is not Pete's real name. Yeah. Uh, what? But Pete is the current something uh, for the Browns. I think he's, mm. he's some chief hmm. officer of personnel or something for the Cleveland Browns in the NFL. But he was uh, in the front office of two other major league teams before that. Interesting. But he's in the That's NFL now uh, for the Browns, a terrible organization whose quarterback is a rapist. I thought, ah. oh. ah. I thought this movie was going to end with... Billy going to the Yankees and then Pete stepping up as GM. Ah, uh, yeah. Ooh. Like a change of the guard kind of deal. Yep. That's a good fanfic. Nope. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll write it on like that's why whatever you write him. fanfic on. So nobody cares about the family shit. What were you guys, <laughs> what, what, what confused you? What were the questions baseball related that y'all had? Uh, the biggest included? thing for me was the trading midseason. I yeah. didn't realize it was a thing. Yep. And like for a sport that's like, I also didn't realize or never considered how money driven the teams are and how even if like you're limited by your budget at the end of the day yeah. and how poor teams are just going to stay poor. Yep. So, yeah, the race It's crazy that you can just trade people though in such a right. money driven sport cuz that seems like that could affect the outcome of teams and sport. Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm. So look at so right Did you guys now, ever play that game Pit? It's like a stock, stock market no. card game. Oh, it reminded me a lot of that one scene because it's like you'll you're trying to get four of a kind or something like that, and you have whatever's in your hand. You're like two, 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 and you trade two with somebody. and oh, you keep yes. swapping cards. I kind of remember that. Yeah. I remember that. I yeah. didn't play card games like that because they stressed me out too much. Like that, and like they're uh, pretty hectic. Slaps. Yeah, but that's what that one scene reminded me of because it was like very heisty yeah. almost, where he's like, "We're trying to pull one over here with," and I love that part because he was like, "Is there coffee on?" And she's like, "Yes." Like, what are you boys <laughs> up to? <laughs> it's like, oh man, shout to his know, secretary Suzanne. Suzanne, mm -hmm. she's a she's a hero. So. The current payroll today um, in 2023 is the two New York teams are at the top. The Mets are number one. I can't fathom what they're spending all this money on, Elijah, because uh, <laughs> the Mets are trash. And every year they throw tons of money around. They, they have the highest payroll by almost $100 million. Uh, that's, that's stupid. They have a $353.5 million <laughs> payroll. Uh, number two is the Yankees at 277. Uh, and the very, very bottom team, so think 333 mil, 353 mil at the top, the very, very bottom team is still Oakland uh, at 56 hmm. million. Jeez. Uh, and two positions. Which isn't too far off from. It's really not. Like it's a 40 to, some million. to scale, it's about the same as what it was. Yeah. Uh, two uh, spots from the bottom in 28th place is Tampa with 73 million. Go Rays. And we were one of the best. Teams is that in not country. infuriating to you? It, that uh, like the New York teams are always going to be on top because they're always going to have the most money. So they're not on top, though. The Mets are trash. And the Yankees were, I believe, the worst team in the American League East this year. So it, on, like, one, on one hand, it's infuriating because I think. And even if you get a good player on a poor team, they're just going to be traded. Or they're going to get an offer that they or they're an or, offer they can't refuse. Or they're going to be yeah. so much of the salary cap that the rest of the team around them will be terrible. So what it ends up being now is um, the Rays do so well because we have um, pretty much undisputed the best farm system in baseball. So where we succeed is every if you're old, we're not messing with you we do occasionally do the thing that the a's did in this movie at the deadline where we will get an old veteran on the cheap for a year uh we did this with nelson cruz in 2020 uh just kind of an old dude that could hit home runs like he didn't his batting average wasn't great but if his bat hit the baseball it was going out and we used him to help get to the world series um but no it's 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 infuriating on a level because i think if we had yankees money how good could we be right 
But at the same time, it's kind of delicious to know that we have, <laughs> you know, four times less money and we kicked their ass for the past like five years straight. Yeah. Um, it, and in fact, the Baltimore Orioles are in 29th. They have, they have a lower payroll than us and they were the number one team in our division. So yep. the two top teams in our division were the cheapest two teams in baseball, essentially. And we beat the Red Sox, we beat the Blue Jays, we beat the Yankees. Uh, It'd be interesting to see like budget versus like where they're at. Yeah, in the in the league, I guess. It also made me chuckle how blown uh, blown up. Um, and th- those are <coughs> per year, um, right? Payrolls, because the salaries now are hilarious. They're stupid. It's so. So they dumb. were talking about, oh, we can't afford this guy. He's seven million dollars. Shohei Otani, who is just. He's the closest thing to Babe Ruth we've seen since Babe Ruth. So eh. shut up. She doesn't like him because she's a hater. He's the best baseball since player. His in team a, loses. Well, I haven't yeah, seen him do anything. He's stuck on the Oof. Angels who are trash and they're trash forever and they'll always be trash. He's like, Ugh, my arm's broken. Yeah, he tore his UCL. Again. Stop mm. talking. He tore his UCL <laughs> again. He's the greatest baseball player baseball has seen in 100 years. So they're talking $7 million contracts in this movie. He, I guarantee you, will bring more than six hundred million dollars over it's his next contract. Oh my Holy Stu- God. It's stupid. He's Nobody gonna, needs that he's much gonna money. break half a billion, and he could he could get like six hundred and twenty million over ten years. I was gonna say, what's the time frame? Over ten years, but still, he's sixty That's, million. Yeah. He is what almost do you do with all that money. He's, I don't know. He's what the do you A's. Do? Like, he'll be the A's salary just himself. Every year for ten years. That's yeah. insane. That's bananas. And, and That's you know insane what? Insane to compare it that way. He deserves it because he this year Not before he got injured. He this year before he got injured. That much money. Okay, well, but that's a whole other here's why yeah. he deserves that much money. Here's why he before he got injured this year was the best pitcher and the best hitter. Nobody mm. yeah. has done that since Babe Ruth. Nobody since like the early 1910s has has done that. So he's a freak of nature and he deserves all of the money in the world he can have some of mine so no uh, baseball no questions. he can give us just like 0.1 percent <laughs> yeah. like huh. let's you talk about miss it so you had a, a trade deadline thing you just didn't yeah. know there was a deadline uh there's a deadline they did say it in the movie but it was just kind of a quick punch and if you had no context you wouldn't know carl do you have anything that confuses out of you I don't think I well mine isn't really baseball related but Billy is divorced but he wears the wedding ring throughout I, the entire I movie. That too. Yeah, I've noticed that as well. He might have a second wife, I guess. He does have a second wife. Uh, okay. She realized to make the movie and cut, and they it's had cut. scenes in the movie with his new wife that got cut because it doesn't gotcha. matter. It's interesting that the, she, well, there wasn't even like a phone I, call or something. I thought yeah. yeah, I thought it was like a character thing. Where it was like maybe he's like he's romantic hanging past on past or, yeah. yeah, he's like hanging on to something. But maybe and maybe that's what they wanted, and that's why they cut it. But yeah, I was just like, that's interesting. Um, I don't think I had too many questions. I think you know throughout the movie, like the everything they kind of make it pretty clear. They like double down on some points, yeah. and they try to like they, they even have like some like exposition with like Jonah Hill's character or Peter Brand and like a Billy Bean about like, if we trade him, then he's going to come to us and they only have us to ask, you know, so right. they kind of explain it all. I but really yeah, I mean, liked that. The, the plan, the angles mm-hmm. you, you ma- they were basically, he was ma- basically manufacturing interest for a player that nobody was yeah. interested in so that he could get his guy. And that's totally how that stuff works in all sports. Yeah. That, that's how that was really works. cool to it's, see. It's a lot of politicking and, and stuff. So I don't know. Bureaucracy. Was, yeah. How, how long have we been running? 30, 50 minutes? 52 minutes. 52 minutes. Jesus. Yeah. Wept. You talked a lot about baseball. <laughs> well, it's a baseball movie. I'm sorry. It, this was probably <laughs> no, not was... one of the best movies of the year, but I, it's one of my... F- I had the most fun watching this almost of any other movie. I was a big baseball guy. Like, Mike Dillingham has been telling me to watch this movie for a thousand years, and I, I get a, it. I had a similar thought. I don't know that it's, like, high up on my list, but it was one of the most enjoyable movies. I kind of started to feel bad at a point. Um, when they were talking about the intangibles and stuff, and I was like, "Oh man, they're gonna hate this movie." And this is just my no. shit. Yeah, this well, is for oh, me. I Real quick, the dialogue, man. That's one great. more baseball thing. Can I just say that right now we are doing a complete 180 on metrics in baseball, and now everybody's like, "Oh, but we need to go back to feel. It's not all about numbers. It's all this analytics." No, it is. And th- now we are. I get to. How many followers does he have on Instagram? I have to listen. <laughs> I have to listen to Talking Heads in Baseball, Alex Rodriguez, talk about how 
baseball should be more about intangibles and less about the numbers. And then what do they do for the entire game is talk about a dude's OPS plus and batting average and his on base percentage and his strikeout rate. It's like, don't tell me that analytics don't matter and and that we should be paying attention to Dick two inches in the room before the rest of them or whatever. (laughs) And then spend the whole game giving me stats. Stupid. It's just talking out of both ears. It sucks. Uh, yeah, no. but how hot are the players? Oh, but that's how what hot? I want. I want hot mm. points. How hot are the players? How hot? No, I didn't, I didn't do hot points for any of the players. You did I Brad Pitt. I was just uh, trying to segue. This is where I'm disappointed. You didn't um, do... Wait, what? You she, did, she do, she hot did do hot points, points for Brad Pitt. I did do hot points for Brad Pitt. I'm sad do. that we, we started hot points so late. Because imagine if we had him for Fight Club and then we could do Brad Pitt versus Brad Pitt. Well, let me just tell you right now, Brad Pitt in this movie fares better than I think he would have in Fight Club. A hundred percent. Because he's crazy. I know he's got the abs in Fight Club, but listen, the crazy, I don't want crazy. He probably has him here too. He works out. They're probably still there. Mm -hmm. Like, come on. Yeah. I don't want... You don't lose abs. He's greasy. (laughs) He probably doesn't brush his teeth in Fight Club. Those are locked in. (laughs) They're famously easy to keep. (laughs) You get a six pack at the store. Uh, uh, go ahead and hot points, please. Anyways, so yeah, okay. Um, hot points. So as like I say, we start at a five. So he got a plus one for when the scene where he was explaining the math and pointing at Pete. Yeah, you uh, liked that. I like that. You like the was it the power? It was, that the, did it it for was you? the power and the confidence. Ooh. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I have neither. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. That's not true. And then I gave a plus one for general swag. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it's hard to quantify what exactly what exactly it is. Then I gave a plus one for the you can't start Pena scene because again yeah. the power and the confidence that, that was he cool. was wielding. Yeah. I was like, yeah. There a lot of G- general manager dick swinging was yeah. happening mm-hmm. in this movie in a great way. So, but then we lost a point. This is gonna, this is a um, kind of a strange cut. There was a quick scene, but it was long enough. Where he has his glasses like on his nose and he's like, <laughs> 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 and I lose like, the point for being blind. He's like not hot. Out well, and he was to read. like pensive. He didn't have glasses on the whole. Like pensive. he had them on off and readers. on. He was just kind of like, <laughs> and I was like, not hot, not hot. So minus one, which mm. leaves us at a seven. So no, Ooh. it's interesting to me <laughs> that you will take a point off for wearing glasses on the on the end of your nose, but not for doing chewing tobacco for an entire movie i didn't really th- i don't know i didn't really right. pay attention to that right. i enough. don't know i'll see you uh hit do your the, drugs the drugs are cool <laughs> um i'm the worst i have to use the bathroom oh my god no. you can't do hit mid or miss for seven seconds and I, wrap this episode i <gasps> have to pee so bad we'll be right back oh shoot yeah leave that <laughs> in we're back we're back in <laughs> uh nick took a little tinkle feeling good you know you have what Seven S- ounces of liquid, and you gotta pee. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta pee. Hey, when you gotta go. You boy. gotta go. You gotta go. Um, I'm glad you didn't piss your pants in my. That would have made really good content. Delicious though. share. <laughs> Some people are into it. Uh, oh. let's, let's do hit, men or miss. Let's start with Danielle. Me. You never start. Uh, no. Um, I'll give it a hit. <gasps> I liked it. Baseball gets a hit. I honestly was immediately <clears throat> like pulled into the story. And, like, I cared about the characters a they, lot. They do a good job of setting the stakes. Yeah. And, and hooking you with what, on paper, is a boring-ass movie. <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, like, I don't know. Everything on this list has been so stressful. It was kind of nice to have a low stakes. But, like, still, like... The stakes were substantial, but it's, at the end yeah, of the day, it's baseball. Yeah, it was baseball. still interesting. Yeah. And, you know, I like the swag of the main characters. Jonah Hill was great. Oh, um, so it was good. well done. So, yeah, I'll give it a hit. I liked it. Carl? I'm going to give a hit as well. I hey. really enjoyed this movie. Um, I think if it was a book, I wouldn't have liked the book, but I think just the pacing of this movie was really great. I thought yeah. the character dynamic between Brad Pitt and Jonah Hill was great too. Um, and they did a good job of like explaining everything in a way that didn't make it feel dumbed down. All right. I'm yeah. also going to give it a hit because I love baseball. Nick? Oh. I too am going to give it a hit. <gasps> a banger! Wow! Nice. You have a banger! It, um, it's a home run. Earlier. I don't know. Sports! It's, Grand Slam. It's, it's high up on the list. Nice. It is a Grand Slam. Four runs? It's high up on my list of movies we've seen. Uh, I don't Ooh. know where it's at, but it was one of the most enjoyable movies. I had a blast. Mm. Carl, what do you think? I was smiling the like whole time. Like, top half? Limited. 
What? How, where, where do you put this one? Like top half? Oh, top ten? Uh, like just a, we don't have to uh, really, really rank God, it. But top t- uh, gut feeling. Probably maybe top ten, top twenty, definitely top half. Top half, yeah. This is one of those surprising movies, like uh, the Big yeah. Sick, where you're like, I didn't expect to like this, and I do. So I, I was think kind of bummed the next out like about up. watching it. I just didn't really want to, because here's what sucks is. There's like playoff baseball on right now, and I did not watch the playoff Actual baseball game baseball. I wanted to watch because I had to watch this. But then the at least I'm, it was a baseball movie. Then right. the Astros won, which sucks. So maybe the Rangers would have won Ooh. if I'd have watched it. Maybe uh, this yeah. was our second baseball movie, right? Yeah. League yes, of their own. League of Their Own. It's weird to compare them, but oh, yeah. which one did you prefer? This by a mile. Yeah, yeah. same. Mm-hmm. I love the League of Their Own, but I'd rather watch this. I'm with you. I don't know. Well, it's you're a girl, so yeah, you have to pick the girl movie. <laughs> I like I the know, tone I feel of like this movie I do more. Have to pick the girl movie, but then yeah. it has Tom Hanks and Madonna. Like mm. Nick even on. knew it was Madonna for some of the movie. For <laughs> some of it, not, <laughs> not all half. of it. Half. Um, I liked both. That's an acceptable answer. I don't. Don't make. I'm not gonna choose. You can't well, make me. they're different. Listen, they're way different. We have to get the hell out of here <gasps> because mm-hmm. we have a hard out. Because you have to watch 30,000 years of The Bachelor. Yes, I do. And we don't pull a movie this year. This year. This Jesus year. Christ. We don't pull a movie this <laughs> week. No yeah. more movies. Because it's spooky, scary <gasps> skeleton time. Spooky. And the closest we're going to get to a uh, horror movie, because I'm not going to watch one, nah. is a... It's Hellboy. We're going to watch Hellboy. We're going to watch both of them. All two of them. There's that <laughs> remake that no one cares about. So we're going to watch yep. Hellboy and Hellboy 2. Uh, I have seen Hellboy. This is on the list because I have not seen Hellboy 2 and I wanted to, but because Hellboy 2 is what is on the list, we have to watch both of them. <laughs> so, not, we're not going to do two episodes. We're going to do just both Hellboy movies we're gonna discuss both. in one episode. And it will come out on actual Halloween, <gasps> no? Yep. Yes. Yes. So, That's exciting. Uh, we'll see you the on Spooky, Spooky Day, oh. where we will talk about Guillermo del Toro's masterpiece. Hellboy, <laughs> it's a really good movie. I loved Hellboy. I know you're not excited about I'm it. I'm not excited about but it. But I was like, as far as like Prove me wrong. comic book movies go, you know, I think Hellboy's my favorite. It's Ooh. got that uh, original Spider-Man feel. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's right. It doesn't have okay. that. It doesn't have that MCU clinicalness. You know that <laughs> yeah. ultra polish. That, yeah. That, mm. that very makes mar- sense. very marketable. For all ages, Hellboy's got a little bit of an edge. A little rough. Yeah. And it's a little... It's not rough. Like, it's not uber violent or gross, but it has some more grounded and mature and emotional themes and stuff. And some Nazis die in it. It's just... It's called Huge Hellboy. So yeah, I my, can't parent, my mom didn't want me to watch it because it's a spooky it's, devil it man. It sounds like but, uh, the devil and the devil. We had to call it evil. H-Boy growing well, up. He is a demon. H-Boy! H-B. H-E-Double <laughs> Hockey Sticks Boy. H-B. H-Boy. H-B. All right. HB. Uh, HB. We're going to watch HB1 and uh, HB2 Electric <laughs> Boogaloo. We will see you on Ooh. Halloween where we may or may not be in costume. Oh, Pro- my God. Ooh. Probably not. No, we should. Okay. Mm. Okay. I got to get a costume. Set. Yeah, we got to. We'll all come as me. Just wear your black t shirts. <laughs> all right, boys. boys Boring. and girls. Happy baseball. Happy Halloween. Happy uh, gin and tonic day. And we will <gasps> catch you in the next one.